Welcome to Peninsula Beat. I'm Maria Soreo. Work is underway on PV Drive East. The project designed to make the roadway safer will continue throughout the summer. Residents should slow down and be mindful of the workers and construction while driving. Liz Brown Swanson sat down with our Mayor Jerry Dehovic for the latest information on the project. What might not be in the best shape is Palos Verdes Drive East and we're going to move forward and try to fix up that road and make modifications. That's happening this summer. So it is. It talk is. about that and uh, kind of explaining what the project's going to, that's going to take place, what we want residents to know about. Obviously, there's also been uh, some concern about tree removal along the drive sure. to complete that project. So, Well, it's a very big project, yeah. as you know. Uh, it's been a long time coming and uh, it includes things such as uh, resurfacing of the roadways, uh, repairing sidewalk, sidewalks, guardrails, curbs, gutters, uh, trail improvements, um, vegetation clearance, which is what you just talked about, and we'll talk about that in a second. Replacing and updating the sign is just a general refresh of the entire, and repaving, obviously, and restriping. Uh, but that project goes from Palos Verdes Drive South on Palos Verdes Drive East all the way to the border of, of uh, Rolling Hills Estates. So um, the, the project uh, is intended really to enhance safety. That's probably our primary goal. Uh, well, it is our primary goal, not only aesthetically, but, you know, we, we're concerned about motorists and bicyclists and equestrians that are on PV Drive East uh, and the pedestrians. And, and the original project was designed to widen uh, specific areas of the, of the road and the shoulders along with everything I just laid out for you. Um, but some of that widening required the removal of vegetation and some very, very mature trees. And obviously no one is uh, thrilled about ever having to cut trees down. Um, Although the plan did call for tree replacement, we, you know, it's replacing a tree with a small tree and, and something that's been there for 40, 50 mm -hmm. years or longer. It's quite a canopy of trees as you go. Canopy of trees, and we had a couple, couple of residents come forward and speak at the meeting, talk about what it does for sound and what it does for view and what it does for safety and a whole host of issues. So um, staff has been meeting with residents and, um, you know, as part of the construction outreach, and many people have expressed a desire to keep these trees. Uh, the project was delayed because prior to repaving the entire street, there was a lot of infrastructure that needed to be corrected, sewers, drains, uh, realignment of streets, the, the heading on, on, on for safety reasons, uh, streets, some retaining walls, some cutting back of areas. And it would have been a shame for us to go ahead and repave that street, which, which needs repaving desperately in certain areas, um, in advance of coming back and digging up the street again to put a sewer in so we're trying to get all the infrastructure mm -hmm. in place before we do one final paving project and and once that's done i think everybody will be really happy but there's light at the end of the tunnel liz brown swanson sat down with the director of public works michael throne who gives us the update you came on board um, during the city's biggest uh, infrastructure project, like we said earlier, $20 million. So what challenges did that pose for you when you were coming in sort of as it already was taking place? Well, um, I think I was very fortunate in that uh, the prior directors had set up a good process and that the staff is extremely professional. There are seven licensed professional civil engineers here in RPV and they know their business and so they were able to shepherd this project through the development process, through the community process, through the funding process, the environmental work, and finally get to the fun part, which is uh, constructing it and, and building the, the phenomenal tunnel that's uh, here that leads you all the, all the way down to the ocean. And of course, also the water flow issues coming down this canyon. As we sit here alongside PV Drive East, there were issues of it undermining as well, right, with the roadside? Yes, side? absolutely. The, the road here is very, very close to the canyon or vice versa over time. And so by taking those flows, those heavy flows out of the canyon, then the road is able to remain in its place and not have to move. There's not a lot of space or good geometry to to rerun the, the switchback. So taking care of the, of the drainage problems helps the folks downstream and for us, it keeps the road in the right spot. It's, it's gonna be very nice. Uh, we were very fortunate this winter to not really have a significant winter. Uh, the project was prepared for it, had the heavens opened up, right. but any, pretty much any time from right now, if we were to get the, the 100 year storm, the system will work. It's ready to work. And then there's a lot of landscaping that still has to be performed. 
So that will be carrying on through the summer. The contractor will be here taking care of the landscaping in the dry time. And then once it becomes winter, then it'll establish itself. Uh, some other work is uh, because we've come in under, under our grants levels, uh, there are some opportunities to do some more drainage work along PV Drive East. And so we're, we're working with the state to take that opportunity and to spend our full grant a lot. I was going to say, when you say under, un, you come in under, does that mean the project is technically going to be under budget as well? It will be under budget, project? yes. Wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Because it was, was it about 20 million? In round numbers, 20 million. Yeah, let's yes. just throw that out there. And half we got the state grants. Yes. So there you go. So half of it the city paid for mm -hmm. using its cash reserves. Yep. And then the other half was a, a state grant. <laughs> And coming up next, a new restaurant hits the hill that will have your taste buds jumping. And it's that time of year when we celebrate the red, white, and blue. We'll be right back. Mark! Anna! Hey! 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 You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. Well, summer has officially arrived, and that means barbecues, trips to the beach, and one big 4th of July celebration. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes will host their annual 4th of July celebration on the grounds at City Hall. The celebration goes from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be arts and crafts for the kids, lots of fun rides, and maybe some of your favorite 4th of July food. There will also be live music by Boomer McLennan and the Rhythm Rangers. The event is free and parking is just $5. Everyone in the community is welcome, so come on down for all the fun. We hope to see you there. And if you would like to spend an afternoon listening to some jazz, funk, and blues while supporting one of our local charities, then mark your calendars for Sunday, July 27th, when Freedom For You will be hosting a musical concert at the South Coast Botanic Garden. I caught up with the founder of Freedom For You, Dr. Greg Allen, who tells us more about the event. Yeah, well, we've enjoyed our stay at Terranea Resort for six years. We did a jazz through the generations theme, and so we've changed the theme this year of the music and the emphasis, and so we decided to come here to the South Coast Botanical Gardens, a beautiful location, as you know, and, and the music focus, we're going to have jazz, okay. we're also going to have blues, and we're also going to have funk, wow. and we got some incredible musicians coming to perform and do this show. For people that don't know about Freedom For You, tell us a little bit about the charity and where the money goes. Okay, sure. So Freedom For You is a youth organization, so we have creative arts, life skills, leadership, and service programs, and we're connected to eight different schools doing these types of programs. And uh, just trying to help kids uh, go in a healthy direction, help them find their creativity, develop it, focus them, and guide them, get through the teen years, and launch them into young adulthood. And many of them actually play in some of the bands and are quite talented. Oh yeah, we have wonderful high school kids that perform, we have college uh, students, music majors that perform, that actually mentor younger kids. And uh, yeah, there'll be some, some young, excellent uh, teens performing along with our uh, professionals for this show. We're still putting our lineup together, but our, our main uh, guy that's kind of overseeing the music is uh, Dane Kirkpatrick, and Dane has played with many professionals. And then uh, Rebecca Jade's a wonderful vocalist from San Diego. She's going to come up and sing. And the performers are, are musicians who have played with like everybody there is. They've played with uh, Cool and the Gang. They played with uh, uh, they played with the Stevie Wonder. So a lot of the guys are the you know the bass player from this guy and the, the keyboard guy from that guy and the percussionist from this one. So they're we're putting their whole lineup list together for who they're all played with. But they're really and uh, excellent musicians. And the wonderful thing is they're all donating their time. 
they're donating their time to help the, the youth programs that we have. It's just going to be $15 to attend, mm -hmm. and you come here, you can bring your own uh, seating if you want, or you bring a blanket to sit in the grass, on a grass uh, field, mm -hmm. and then uh, you can bring your own picnic. And so you bring your own supplies and, and just uh, park yourself there wherever you want to sit and enjoy the time. There's no cost for parking, and it's just uh, $15 to enter, and then, you know, it's all a great time pretty amazing place to walk around and just kind of be as well. It really is beautiful. I realize I haven't been here in a little while. There's so many things blooming and it's so serene. Great on the mind, very relaxing. It would be a great backdrop for a music concert. And, and I think one of the cool things too is that it, it's really for all ages. Oh yeah, it's for all ages. I mean, and there's grass out here, there's kids out here running around, the kids can run around, and junior high kids, high school kids, adults. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a great time. Don't, we won't let the kids interrupt the music, don't worry about that. <laughs> we have a great sound system, great PA, it'll sound really wonderful. You'll be really inspired. So, so bring the family, bring your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, and just come out and have yeah. a good time. Yeah, okay. bring everybody you know. Great, great. <laughs> And for more information on Freedom For You, you can always go to their website at freedomcommunity.com. And if you're looking for a new restaurant to tantalize your taste buds, do we have the place for you? It's called Jujuya, and after one visit, you'll be hooked. I had a chance to sit down with the owner, Mako Tanaka, who brings his culinary masterpieces to the peninsula. Jujuya means, ju means happiness. And the yeah means house. So basically, you know, the happiness house. What we do is Asian plus American combined. That kind of food what we're doing. So we don't have any, we have some one dishes with the sushi rice. Well, we're not that sushi bar. It's more like a new, new cuisine. It's basically California Asian cuisine. That's what we're doing. You know, my grandparents owned the restaurant, so when I was kids, I've been helping my grandparents. That's, I think, that's how I started getting interested in about the cooking. And then I went, I mean, I'm going to a restaurant business, I think. And what was your favorite thing to cook when you were younger, watching your grandparents? What was their favorite kinds was, of things? That time it was really authentic Japanese food. So wasn't that, I just, wasn't that interesting for me, but I was just helping and I love cooking, so yeah. that's how I started to become chefs, I guess, yeah. yeah. Then after that I moved to Tokyo, then I was working at the Italian restaurants. So kind of like a more European kind of food I've been, I've been cooking, and, and I was working at the Spago and the Chinon Main yeah. and all those stuff, places, so more like, a, I'm not really Japanese chef, I'm more like a, kind of like a European like Italians and the French and the Asian, that kind of food. Interesting, so you've had a lot of really different kinds of, of culinary experiences that have brought you to where you are now. Yes, so yeah, is, we're trying to do like a seafood restaurant, so 95% is the seafood. And we have some chicken and beef, okay. but most of the dishes is all the seafood. And also we have an oyster bar which is we're trying to get like a three different kind of uh, oyster from the west coast and also uh, three different kind of uh, oyster from uh, east coast. Okay. And then also we have some sashimi, a lot of different kind of sashimi, which is carpaccio. Mm -hmm. We have a salmon, yellowtail, uh, you know, uh, also tuna, and the tartar and the spicy tuna with a sushi rice, crispy rice, and also, plus we have a chaco grill, which is a Japanese style chaco grill. We use a uh, bincho, bincho means Japanese chaco from Japan. We use that to cook for all those fish, the grill fish. And then, you know, plus we have some chicken, which is we use a free range chicken. Uh, called Jidori, which is very famous and uh, everybody using in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, plus we have a steak. I've been looking for the uh, different kind of locations for after I closed a restaurant called Mako in Beverly Hills. And Finally, I find these locations and I look around. I mean, this is really good, you know, nice locations. And also, uh, there's nothing around this area, kind of this kind of food. 
that's why I choose to the uh, these locations. We close on Monday right now, okay. and we open Tuesday through Sunday. And I noticed you have um, you have an oyster bar here. Yes. I'm um, seating, and you have a, a regular bar in the other room. Yes, and also you can you can eat here at the oyster bar. Okay. Just a regular menu, and also even the bar. You can sit there, watch TV, we have a big screen TV, and we have a nine different kind of draft beer. Plus we have a bottle, and also we have like a three different kind of uh, wine, which is a white wine, with uh, kegs. So kind of like a draft, draft wine. And uh, so then also they can have whole menu at the bar. You can see everywhere you can have a regular menu. And I can tell you, I'm looking forward to trying everything on that menu. Jujuya also takes reservations. You can call them at 310-541-9500. And when we come back, you'll meet a local resident who helps to make our community just a little more beautiful. And our mayor has a special message for one of our local businesses. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of traffic safety near our schools. School zones are always 25 miles per hour. The school zone only applies when students are outside the school in the morning and the afternoon. Parents should always allow extra time when dropping off their children and should know the school's drop-off routes and procedures. Motorists should also focus on safe driving near schools. Some of the violations I see near schools are cell phones, speeding, double parking, seat belts, and child safety seats. Students should always remember to cross safely at intersections and not to run out in front of cars. When we follow these rules, we can all stay safe. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Always. Lock it up. Hi there. I'm Dee Dee Daniels, and I've been a personal trainer for almost three decades. Please join me on Peninsula Fitness, a 30-minute daily workout to get yourself moving. Sometimes we're seated, sometimes not. Sometimes we're calm and relaxed and sometimes the workout is high energy. Be sure to tune in every day to see what we're up to. All the workouts are safe and effective, and best of all, I can be your personal trainer right in your home. Not only do you work out with me, but sometimes my colleagues join us in the studio and we do a specialty workout, like Christine here who's taking me through some kickboxing moves. Don't worry, that kick was not part of the show. So join me, Dee Dee Daniels, every day on Peninsula Fitness, and let's get moving. I'll see you soon. introduce you to a local resident who has learned firsthand that building relationships with other businesses in our community leads to success. Sean Najad is the owner of RPV Flowers and not only are his flowers a cut above but he prides himself on going the extra mile for his customers. My brother and I, Ray, okay. we had, we, of course we have been doing business at this location since 1988, so long time. In 92, we took over uh, a dying business, which was a dry cleaning business, so before you know it, we went into dry cleaning business. And then, and then in 92, we had a neighbor who was a contractor next door, he was moving out, so we took over that space as well, and we figured, okay, we have two retail spaces, so okay. we kept on looking at different ideas and we kept on coming back to flower shop and uh, 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 what could work for for the location and the community and we figured we wanted to go take it a notch higher go to a higher end bring in different designs cleaner looks and uh, again take it to a higher level of course 
West Los Angeles has more of that, and in South Bay, we felt there was not enough of it. Interesting. Definitely some, but we felt not enough. So we thought there is room for one in PV. And our timing was, could not have been any better, was right on the money. Uh, as we actually opened up our business, Terraneo's construction was coming to an end. Okay. And so we, uh, we connected with them, and it has been, of course, a great partnership for us. So once a week, he actually comes and replaces most of the house flowers, everything that you see in the living room, on the concierge desk, near the restaurants. Other than that, we probably see them once a day, if not every other day, on slow times. I think Sean also brings that local feeling to it. You're not getting 1-800-Flowers, which may seem very impersonal. We also have a few things that are named for specific arrangements that we've had guests say, oh, I loved that, and he created one that's in a fishbowl with shells, or he creates the one with the bamboo, and it kind of takes on its own personality, but he knows that that's what our guests liked. I've seen some things show up that even I didn't think that's what I asked for, and I went, wow, that's gorgeous. <laughs> um, they even brought, you know, case in point, we have these vases or vases, if you will, that sit on the concierge desk and the front desk, mostly on the concierge desk. They're this gorgeous silver collection that he bought on his own and just started using, and people ask me constantly, where did those come from? Who did these flowers? These are phenomenal. I've never seen something like it. And I think in this world of like this very competitive high design, uh, flower industry nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of tough to make an impact in that sense, but he does. Their weekly arrangements uh, we replace once a week, uh, but we're, are, are we there almost every day? Pretty much so, because when their guests arrive and they stay and they, they, they're requesting for flowers, then of course it comes to us. Where do you get the flowers? How often do you get flowers? How does that work? Flowers, we go to the downtown flower market. Okay. Um, it works combinations. Uh, I go to the market at least once, maybe twice a week. And one of the things I always tell the guys, you, you mentioned roses. Mm -hmm. Guys, and of course, me being one of them, before, before I got in this business, I only knew roses and nothing but roses. So when guys call to order flowers and they say, can I order a dozen red roses? Now I actually have a conversation with them. Oh. I try to tell them, you know what? There are other flowers besides roses. Could we bring in other flowers? Of course, roses also to complement that and mm -hmm. make it an arrangement and not necessarily a dozen red roses or mixed roses. So to make it more interesting and bring something, and uh, it has worked quite well. And, I, and I, of course, if they want roses, not a problem. But uh, it is one of those things that I try to educate the guys, like myself. Right. You know, we could do other things besides roses. <laughs> And finally, the Terranea Resort continues to celebrate their five-year anniversary. Liz Brown Swanson had a chance to catch up with our mayor, Jerry Dehovic, at the resort to talk about the milestone. On behalf of myself and the entire city council, I'd like to congratulate Terranea on their fifth anniversary. Uh, they are truly a jewel in this community, and we're very, very happy to have them. So again, congratulations to uh, Terry Hack and her entire management team and everybody, the, the thousand or so employees that work down at Terranea. This year, we're, we're actually in budget season right now and we're looking at Terranea to provide about $4 million in transient occupancy tax, uh, which is just a huge, huge number. And, and obviously that has to do with their success. They have uh, not only on the, on the uh, room side and just visitors coming, but on the corporate side, they're doing very, very well. So. Uh, keep it up, Terranea. We could use that revenue. You know, the, the many times we've been at Terranea, one of the things that my wife and I and even my kids always talk about is you really feel like you're on vacation. You know, you, you get different view aspects. You go and eat on the veranda over there and look down the coast from a different angle, and you really truly feel like you're on vacation. The, the food, the venue, everything is, again, world class. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that, that my family and I enjoy. And from a from a couple standpoint, my wife and I like popping into Nelson's every now and then for a little adult time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe it's been five years. The Terranea Resort is certainly a jewel in our community. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV TV, make it a great day.